There's a line from author Marilyn Robinson that stayed with me all these years since I first read it. She talks about there are such beautiful things in the world that have been put into our hands and to do nothing to honor them is to do them great harm. The more I think about that idea, that there are really important, beautiful, good things in the world that demand that we honor them, that we realize, that we, we recognize their preciousness, that we honor that and, and give appreciation for that, that that's an important part of being human. I think about that more and more when I hear this story that comes from the 12th chapter of John's Gospel and helps me to make sense of a story that for a lot of my life, I, I have to confess, I'm, I'm not really sure I knew what to do with. The way John tells the story, this is what we call John 12, beginning in the first verse. It goes like this. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There he gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You do not always have me. There are so many things that are strange and difficult about that story, but I have to confess too, one of the things that's difficult for me is that Jesus isn't really the center of the action. He receives this show of love, of devotion, of honor, this, this almost embarrassing show of, of deep, deep care and affection of love from Mary. He pours out this very expensive uh, perfume, something worth like, I don't know, most of a year's salary. And she pours it out on Jesus, on his feet, and then dries his feet with her hair. And I just don't know what to do with that. I, I've, I've grown up with, with a faith that says Jesus is at the center, right? G every, everything in the scriptures points to Jesus as the clearest revelation of who God is. And here's a story that's not really about Jesus doing something heroic, healing or uh, curing or preaching or teaching, uh, but Jesus is on the receiving. And I, I don't quite know what to do with that. And to be honest, there have been times over the years where either I've heard others or have entertained the notion myself that somehow Jesus needs to be the center of this story. Except that maybe this is about Mary understands what Jesus is about to do. She honors who he is and she needs to be given permission to honor what Jesus is about to do. At the cross. She understands, at least in, a, in, some, in some way, even if it's not all fleshed out, that Jesus is headed toward a confrontation that will cost him his life. Maybe she's been the one paying attention about the cross that uh, Jesus keeps talking about that's in front of him. The disciples still can't understand that Mary gets it, and maybe also out of gratitude for Jesus having raised her brother Lazarus from the dead, or maybe as a thank you for all the countless other things Jesus has done, she simply wants to show a Appreciation. This is her act of honoring Jesus, and Jesus understands. He needs to allow her to do just that. Mary can be the center of this story, and yet she herself realizes she's trying to honor Jesus for all he has done and all he is about to do. This is her way of saying, I, I get it, Jesus. I, I, I don't have to understand all of it, but I, I get it. You are about to lay down everything, and you have done so much, and all I can do is offer back this gift to say to you, I get it, I understand. And I understand that there are things you can do, Jesus, that I can't. You get to be the one who raises my brother from the dead when I couldn't. You get to be the one who is willing to lay down his life on a cross. I don't get to do that, but I can honor it. I can see what you are doing and let you know I see you. And Jesus, in response, instead of stopping her or shunning her or entertaining this foolish nonsense about you could have just given the money to the poor when Jesus is like, look, you're so concerned about the poor, you could do that anytime. How come you're not? 
Jesus says back to Mary in so many words, I see you, I understand, I, I, I see that you get it, that you get what I'm doing, and that you're simply trying to honor what you were thankful for in me. I think in so many ways of the small gestures we do to show honor to people who have come before us who did things that cost them and yet we want to express our thanks, knowing that it's not ours to, to, to make more sacrifices necessarily, but to honor what they sacrificed for us. I think of families who go out to the cemetery and put flowers on the graves of their loved ones who, say, served in World War II and were forever changed by the experience of being in war. And the family knows they, they can't go through the trauma of war for them. They, they can't go back in time and fight the battle for them or, or change what they went through, but they can honor the sacrifice that their loved ones made trying to uh, fight off Nazis or to keep their homeland and their loved ones safe. Or I think of the family storytelling that happens in my family and maybe in yours as well as we honor the memory of those who worked hard to help provide for the family. Sometimes it's telling the stories of those who went through the depression and all they sacrificed so that their kids could have a better life. We tell the stories of the people who came from an old country and they, they sought a better life and so they came and they, they worked low menial jobs and they were treated with disrespect in order to provide a better life for their family. And we, we tell these stories to honor them or we, we tell the stories of our own loved ones, our parents or the generation before, those who worked hard or took um, additional jobs or sacrificed so that their kids could have a good life, or the person who stayed home so that they could be caretaker for an aging parent or for children who were in need. We tell these stories as a way of saying, I may not be able to do what you did. That's not maybe, maybe it's not mine to do that, but I want to honor what you are doing, what you have done, and to help you to see I get it. And I appreciate it. Mary's gesture, she, she's not trying to buy anything for Jesus or earn anything from Jesus. This is simply a show of gratitude. This is simply, I get it, Jesus. I want to honor who you are, what you have done for me already, what you are doing right now, what you will do. And the only way I know to do that is to take this valuable thing of mine and pour it out to you. This honestly is kind of why I think it is so beautiful when I see family members lay a wreath on the grave of a loved one, whether it's someone who had served in wartime and were veteran or just a loved one, and they'll bring it up either on a holiday or on the person's birthday. And we do these things not because they, that we think they will last. We know these flowers are temporary and, and expensive. And, and maybe that the other person isn't able to, to appreciate the flowers in a way that we can. And yet sometimes we feel like all, all we can do is Take something valuable and lay it at the feet. Lay it in the presence of those whom we want to honor. It's a way of saying, I appreciate all that you have done, all that you are doing, all that you will do. I, I will give this as a way of honoring you. I'm not sure we're really good at talking about how we honor other people or honor God or honor Jesus sometimes. Honor and showing honor is one of those things that requires each of us not to be at the center, to let ourselves be decentered in order to point to those we are trying to show honor to. But that's such an important skill, an important piece of what it is honestly to be the people of God. Because we're always called to put God at the center, to honor, to be thankful for what God has done, is doing, will do for us. What Jesus has done, is doing, and will do for us. But also... Maybe our gift to other people is the ability to honor and to lift up the good that they do and have done and to say, I may not be able to do what you do, but I want to thank you. I want you to know what you do matters. So often when I hear people these days talk about how weary and worn down they are in the important work they do, whether it's people who are first responders in emergency medicine or people who are uh, responders in fire situations or other kind of emergency situations or people working at hospitals, people in emergency rooms or teachers in public education, I hear people talk about how worn down and weary they are and they're, they're not looking for a parade, but, but it would be nice to know that people see what they do matters and to treat them like what they do matters. Maybe part of our gift 
if we're going to be the thoughtful people of God, is to be able to recognize people around us and to say thank you for what you do, to find ways to honor them and simply to recognize that's a gift we're given as followers of Jesus, to be able rightly not to make myself the center of the tension all the time, but to find ways to honor other people and to say, I see what you were doing, thank you. In this story, Mary gets to be the one who sees what Jesus is about to do, who is thankful for all Jesus has done and takes the one thing she has and says, here, I give this to you as a sign of honoring you. I wonder what it will look like for you and for me then this week, who have more than just a jar of perfume, but who have our whole selves our words and our time, our actions and our treasures, what will we do with them to show honor? And who in our lives is worth showing honor to? Marilyn Robinson is right. Beautiful, important things have been placed in our hands, and to do nothing to honor them is to do great harm. Maybe our first calling this week, in this moment, is isn't for us to go out and think we were to save the world, but to pause and to notice, to be observant and to see the wonderful good things that God is doing through other people around us. And simply to say thank you, simply to appreciate, simply to notice and to honor what God is doing through them. There will come a time for us to do each of our part. There will come a time for us to be the ones to snap into action and to respond, but maybe right now our calling is to honor somebody else that we see the face of Christ in. That's where the conversation is headed this week, so join us this Sunday. See you then.